Hello, and welcome to today's edition of Tech Talk Online. My name is Stefan Maurus. I've been with Bloom Novatist for about eight years now. I work in international sales and am responsible for supporting a number of our subsidiaries. Today I'd like to introduce you to another interesting product from our Digilog family. Surface Roughness Gauges. These are probe systems for monitoring a component's surface quality. They come equipped with Digilog technology too. What's special about these gauges is that they are used directly on the machine tool and can therefore be fully integrated in the production process. In this talk, I'll explain what devices belong to this product family and how they operate what data are generated for analysis, and how reliable these data are. I will also be showing you a number of videos that illustrate the potential of these devices. The examples will show applications on different components in a variety of industries. But first, let's take a closer look at surface roughness itself. Technically, roughness is defined as the unevenness of a surface. The surface quality depends on the production method that was applied. Machining, for example, is a technique in which roughness is an important property. As is the case for the dimensional accuracy of a component, specific requirements apply to surface roughness as well. To ensure that these requirements are met, monitoring is indispensable. Roughness is measured using special devices known as perthometers. A probe tip with a defined shape is passed over the workpiece surface at a constant speed. Various roughness parameters can then be calculated from the recorded measurement profile. Probably the best known parameters are the mean roughness RA, the mean roughness depth RZ, and the maximum roughness depth or max. All three parameters are based on a defined measuring distance, which is subdivided into five segments for analysis. This illustration shows a commercially available perthometer. This device is designed for taking manual measurements. It is usually used in the measuring room, but for large components it can also be used directly on the machine tool. Measurements are always performed manually, however, a perthometer is not suitable for automation, and even less so for automated deployment on a machine tool. This is where our roughness gauge is equipped with Digilog technology come in. Details on how the Digilog technology works were already discussed in Tech Talk Online as part of the discussion on Digilog Touch Probes, which can be used to scan a component to compare the true profile with the set profile. Let me give you a brief summary. In the Digilogic measurement process, many thousands of measured values are output instead of just a single signal. In essence, a data flow is generated. During measurement, the deflection state of the stylus is recorded continuously. The probing system is basically turned into a scanning system. The same principle applies to our roughness gauges. Just like in a perthometer, the stylus slides over the workpiece and records the roughness of the surface. The raw data are processed by the software in accordance with the calculation method set out in DIN-ISO, and the usual roughness parameters are output. The main advantage of the roughness gauge system over a perthometer is that the probe is integrated in the machine tool. The cutting tools are replaced and the roughness probe is inserted in between the individual processing steps. The subsequent scan and the ensuing analysis are fully automated and do not interrupt the production process. Let's look at an example of this operating principle in a video. Here you can see a component for medical equipment being processed on a machine tool. After machining is finished, the probe is inserted. An initial scanning process determines the exact position of the probe relative to the component, and then the stylus is moved against the component and the surface is scanned. The roughness gauge is fully integrated in the machine control. The Bloom NC cycles control the probe. The machine operator can influence the measuring distance and the feed rate. Usually the specifications of the DIN ISO standard are applied. These are 5.6 mm for the measuring distance and 25 mm per minute for the feed rate. However, the roughness gauge offers enough flexibility to be able to use different settings so that the requirements and cycle times demanded by the particular situation can be met. 
I'll explain that later in more detail. Let's first take a look at the analysis. The measurement data are either displayed on the control screen of the machine or on a separate monitor. The start menu shows the current test plan. You can see the settings selected by the machine operator. The measuring distance. And the feed rate. The raw data are displayed on the screen while scanning is in progress. After scanning is completed, the software analyzes the raw data and outputs the roughness parameters RA, RQ, RT, RZ, and RMAX. These values are displayed on the screen together with the roughness profile. On the basis of the color coding, it is easy to tell if the measured values are within the set limits. Green values are within the specified tolerance. Yellow values are still within tolerance but have reached or exceeded the warning limits. Red values indicate that the tolerance limits have been exceeded and the generated surface does not meet requirements. An error message is output and the machine is stopped for example. In addition to the roughness profile, the waviness of the measured surface can also be displayed. The roughness gauge software is capable of differentiating between roughness and waviness, and it can display both profiles. One frequently asked question is how the accuracy of a bloom roughness gauge compares to that of a conventional measuring system. Let's compare them. In a rocker arm test setup, the rocker arm bore and the sliding surface are both measured. Both surfaces have been ground. A variety of roughness gauges from Bloom are used to perform the measurements. These results are compared with the values of a commercially available perthometer. One more thing before we turn to the results. In determining the roughness of surfaces, the order of magnitude of the measurements is well below 1 micrometer. We can measure values on the order of tenths, hundredths and even thousandths of a micrometer. Please keep this in mind as we compare the data now. The purely graphic analysis already tells us something about the comparability of the roughness profiles. The top one shows the results of the conventional device, while the bottom one depicts the results of a roughness gauge from Bloom. What about the measured values themselves? Here we have the results of the measurements on the sliding surface. The roughness parameters RA, RZ and RT were determined. In the column on the left, you can see the results of the conventional roughness gauge, while the two columns to the right of that contain the results of two different Bloom systems. It's easy to see that the differences between the results are minimal. Another thing should be mentioned in this regard. Roughness measurements can rarely be reproduced, even in the case of repeat measurements of the same feature under the same conditions. The following table shows the roughness values of repeat measurements, both for a conventional device and for a roughness gauge from Bloom. The slight scattering of the results is completely normal. As already noted, we are dealing with measurements in the submicrometer range. A roughness gauge from Bloom delivers absolutely reliable values on the surface quality of a component. At the outset, I mentioned that the measuring distance and the feed rate are in line with the specification of the DIN ISO standard. However, in a highly productive manufacturing situation, the goal is always to keep the cycle times as short as possible. Automation of roughness measurements is already an enormous time saver compared to manual measurement. In addition to this, roughness measurement gauges from Bloom have the capacity of operating with a considerably higher feed rate than the relatively low 25 mm per minute dictated by DIN ISO, with the benefit of achieving shorter cycle times. The following test shows the measurement of the roughness parameter raw on a roughness standard. When the usual feed rate is used, the value is just barely 2 micrometers. For the repeat measurement, the feed rate was then increased by almost 20 times. As you can see, the deviation between the measured values is minimal and clearly negligible. This means that the roughness gauges from Bloom are capable of meeting the demands of a highly productive manufacturing facility. Observant listeners will have noticed that the measurements just shown were not performed under the conditions that prevail at a machine tool. The obvious question, of course, is to what extent coolant and contamination affect the measuring results. To find out, we performed another test. The value of RA measured on the roughness standard without contamination is 1.993 micrometers. 
This measurement is repeated after contaminating the standard with grease. The measurement result shows a deviation of one thousandth of a micrometer. Thus, contamination has no influence on the quality of the measuring results. A bloom roughness gauge delivers reliable results, even under difficult conditions, as demonstrated by these measurements on a pump housing with heavy coolant use. Let's have a look at the product portfolio. In the videos, you have already seen different roughness gauges at work. Overall, three different models are available. The TC64RG is the most compact device in the portfolio. The tried and tested Bloom Shark measuring element and the radio transmission unit are contained in a single housing. A series of different styli is available for selection, and which one is used depends on the particular application. Straight styli enable scanning from any direction. The system does not require a specific orientation relative to the component. This makes the probe a truly universal measuring device that meets the demands of a wide range of applications. The data is transferred by radio transmission. The probe is fully compatible with the standard Bloom radio receiver, which is also used for all other products featuring radio transmission. Up to six devices can be operated using one and the same radio receiver. Alternatively, a device is available in which the measuring element and the transmission unit are housed separately in a modular system. By means of various carbon fiber extensions and angle pieces, the system can be extended at will and adapted to the respective requirements. The part of the device that houses the measuring element can also be used without the radio transmission unit and is instead available as a wired variant. With a diameter of only 25 mm, this device is the smallest of all roughness gauges. For highly specialized requirements, the radio transmission unit can be combined with the single roughness gauge. This device features an even higher resolution paired with a lower measuring force. Applications in which this system is used are, for example, very soft materials, very sensitive surfaces, very high demands on the surface quality. As a rule, all devices in the portfolio meet the highest degree of protection, IP68. They can therefore be used in the machine without concern, even under the harshest of conditions and in the presence of coolant. I will now present you with four different application examples in which different roughness gauges are deployed. We'll begin with an application from the automotive sector. The surface quality of the sealing surface of a cylinder head is subject to very high requirements. Blunt or even damaged cutting edges can mean that the specified tolerances and dimensional accuracy are met, but the requirements for surface roughness are not. In this video, a roughness gauge with a modular design is used in combination with an angle adapter and a curved stylus. At the desired location, the sealing surface is scanned and its surface quality is checked. The next example demonstrates that automation is not the only advantage of a bloom roughness gauge. On complex components, such as on this blisk, it can be difficult for the measuring device to reach precisely the location where measurements need to be taken. In this respect, the possibilities offered by a perthometer are seriously limited. By using a suitable model of the bloom roughness gauge, almost any point on the component can be measured with the aid of the machine axis. There is still another advantage to taking measurements directly on the machine tool. When a complex component is taken out of the chuck, for example to check it in the measuring room, it is often difficult or even impossible to resume processing because there will invariably be a slight offset relative to the original position of the component after it is mounted again. With our roughness gauge, you can monitor the component while it is still in the original clamped position. This has the additional advantage that measurements can be taken between the individual work steps. There is no danger of processing a component for hours only to discover later in the measuring room that the component is scrap. Our roughness gauge lets you know immediately whether the surface quality of the component meets requirements or not. Moreover, the component can be processed further at any time since it remains in the originally mounted position even during measurement. The third and last example shows the measurement of roughness on a knee implant. The surface of this artificial knee cap must have a defined surface roughness before it can enter the subsequent polishing step. 
This example clearly shows that the Bloom roughness gauge doesn't only measure roughness on flat surfaces, but is also capable of handling concave and convex areas. As we did before, we again benefit from the machine axis, which can be used to control the movements of the probe and the component at the same time. Depending on the machine and the component, all five axes can be employed simultaneously as needed. This is where conventional perthometers come up against their limits. In this presentation, you have seen applications in production situations with very different requirement profiles, components that are manufactured in large batches and in small batches. The roughness gauges from Bloom are beneficial in both of these situations. So let's recap. Roughness gauges from Bloom enable the automated measurement of surface quality directly on the machine tool without requiring manual intervention on the part of the machine operator. This makes it possible to increase process reliability during production since poor surfaces and problems with the machining process can be detected right in the processing center. Some of the advantages are Use of cutting tools up until the actual end of their tool life. A reduction in the number of scrap parts. The possibility of reworking a component. All of these advantages have one common denominator. They result in a reduction in production costs with the help of yet another product from our Digilog family. Digilog, a technology that offers many possibilities. We have reached the end of today's Tech Talk Online. I hope I was able to give you some useful information on the topic of roughness measurement. Maybe you already have some ideas about how a roughness gauge from Bloom Novitas could help lower your production costs. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our field service personnel will be happy to pay you a visit at your production site. We are looking forward to welcoming you again next time when we hold a Tech Talk online. Until then, take care.